Hey everyone, welcome to Detroit Reservoir here in Oregon. And I'm with my son James and we've got Rob here. He's got a fish on, not five minutes into getting here on the reservoir. Wow, that's a good looking kokanee, I think. Yeah, right out of the gate. Or no, maybe a trout, that's a trout. They've got kokanee and trout here though. Wow, look at that. Start the day with a beautiful rainbow trout on an old goat. Just uh. I think you're right, five minutes into this. Morning everybody, it's our, our first real full day out here. Uh, today we're on Detroit Reservoir, an hour east of Salem, Oregon. Uh, it's known for kokanee trout fishing. Uh, we're doing a variety of things, fishing five poles, trolling this morning. We've got a variety of offerings out as we're trying to tune in our rods and that's a pretty normal practice uh, to dial, tune in your, your kokanee fishing in the morning on a new water. We've got different depths, uh, different offerings. We're going, this right here is just uh, a, a hook and a bead. I'm gonna put a smile blade and some corn, uh, connecting that to a Hellraiser Dodger. And then on the other side of things, uh, we've got squids on sling blades. Everything's tipped with Mike Carey's special corn. And uh, we'll see how this goes this morning. So no, uh, no guest guide this morning. Me and Mike think we know enough about this to catch some fish and, and show you the experience here in Detroit Reservoir. Thanks for joining us. Oh yeah, James Carey's on the boat with our faithful companion Duke. He's our guest captain for the day. Oh, there's our first fish. First fish of the morning. We had a late start today. Little truck issues, no biggie. Oh yeah, this uh, feels like Coke. Mike, why do you like kokanee so much? Boy, they're just a beautiful fish. Bright, shiny silver, they taste delicious. They're just a fun quarry to go after. They really, they really challenge you. Oh, look at that. That's a trout. <laughs> Are you sure? What's the tail on that? Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful fish. Taking, taking a little line. Come to Papa. Look at that fish. Now trout have to be minimum eight, maximum 20. So this looks like a nice slot fish. Bull trout have to go back. That's now bull trout. That is a beautiful rainbow. And uh, caught on that old goat. Look at that fish. You know, we were saying, I love kokanee, but uh, hey, I'll take these fish any day. Look at the amazing green coloring. It's like an aqua on, the, on its back. And check this out. You got your stub on the adipose. So this is one of the hatchery, uh, trout that they plant in Detroit Reservoir. They plant a lot of these fish and uh, man, they grow nice because they put them in at a pound and that's probably pushing a pound and a half, but that's a beautiful fish right there. Fish, fish, fish. Pop off the release. Too. That's a nice fish. Fish on the center oh, line. Double, 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 double. Got a little pot of fish, Mike. Yeah. Oh, that's a good looking fish. Nice. You might want oh, to. That one aerial. You might want to grab and uh, put that rod back in the rod hole. Look at the size of that one. These are beautiful rainbows. Thank you. Nice. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. 
Woo! Look at that! There we go. <laughs> nice fish, James. James, there's a fish on that middle rod here. If you could just rotate in and we'll deal with the fish. Sure. Yep. Looks going. like he might have come off. But... Oh, he was still there just a second ago. That's got some nice size to him. Yeah. That's the fifth fish on an old goat. Boy, they are hot today. And, and when we first got here yesterday, that's what we caught them on. Did we lose that one? Yeah, we lost it. That's also an old goat. That's their new spinner series. James, if you show us, show the folks at home this new old goat spinner series. Mike's been telling me the two blades spin opposite of each other. You can see the little fin on the end there, the little tab. They're reverse tabbed to create a, a inverted spin and an interesting presentation, also an old goat product. Hey everyone, we're taking a break from the action. We've traveled over to the dam here at Detroit Reservoir. This is pretty amazing. You can actually walk out onto the dam. You see there's some people fishing off of the dam. They're fishing for rainbow trout. This reservoir is stocked pretty heavily by Oregon Department of Fishery with rainbows. And so it offers a unique opportunity to take in beautiful scenery and catch some amazing fish at the same time. Stay tuned, you're watching Northwest Fishing Reports. We've got a double D Dodger we're gonna run on the starboard side of the boat. On the back of the Max Double D Dodger, there's a diagram that shows these holes in which direction you should be plugging in. So we're off the starboard side and I want it to swing out far, so we're gonna select number one, which will be on this hole right here. Fish on the double D. Nice. Oh, look at that guy. That's a good looking rainbow, I think. This has got some girth. And he's right in the middle of my line. Planters are, they are pretty nice fish, I gotta say. Hey, James. In the boat. In the boat. Look at that beautiful fish. All right. Not a monster, but a nice plant a rainbow to start the morning. There's your snub. Smile blade does it again. Nice and steady, James. It was pretty small. <laughs> Is that a small one? Yeah. There he is. Another trout. Oh. Oh. That was on the OG as well. You got that's a on, pattern. On the little OG, uh, I think that's an OG2. He's got OG1s and OG2s and then the spinner variations. But we're, we're developing a little bit of a pattern here, Mike. Yeah, we are. I'm kind of surprised we haven't found any of those kokanee yet. I know I'm marking them down there, but. Um, Hey, you know what? You take what the lake gives you, and this lake is known for being stocked with a lot of rainbows, and we're finding out. And there's some healthy ones. That last fish that James caught was seven Fish, behind you, behind you. There we go. All right. We gotta get Rob on one of these fish here. Nice. So this one was 35 feet on the slider. That? Oh, it came off. That was kokanee. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah, that was kokanee. All right. So we got that one on a little Arctic fox trolling fly and a Dutch fork clown pattern classic spin. Pretty cool setup. Short leader to a bent dodger sling blade. Fish, 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 fish! 
Come on, I'm trying to fish. <laughs> yeah, it's still there, Mike. I think, ooh, nice one. Feels like it's got some uh, some fight for this fish. We got it on the on the turn. It's a pretty deep reservoir, and we've been fishing in 60 to 30 feet. But it kind of shallows up as we got to the shore, so we we're pulling a line there, and Mike turned us. And... This one feels decent. Boy, that uh, 45, 50 feet has been massive. Awesome. Oh, oh no, you did. Cool, Jeff. He did. Whew. Another nice rainbow. Yeah, All right. Another good rainbow on the old goat lure here. And that color seems to be winning. I think the fish are telling us something. We may have to switch a couple of these others. This is the real small version. I think it's called the 1.8. And Mike's, did you put those beads on, Mike? I did. A little variation on there. And the key to the unique action is this uh, groove cut in here, which gives it uh, 360 degrees or uh, three axis of spin. Um, so Mike's added a few beads in there. It doesn't impair the action, obviously. Doing the job so and far. A piece of corn on each hook. One piece of corn on each hook. If you didn't catch that, Mike's adding that it's one piece of corn on every hook. So hooks get tipped with uh, Mike's special corn. Available online today. This is the lure we're using and and uh, just caught that rainbow on and having some success with uh, the process here is we've got a couple different flavored uh, shoe peg corns um, and we re-tip it so you got two hooks coming off there. Mike really likes to tip both. One piece of corn and he likes the uh, the opening of the corn facing back, maybe it disperses scent a little bit better. So you take the unopened side, put it on the hook and spin it. I spin it around where it's up the hook a bit and pointing backwards. Pink colored and Mike, how do you get that pink color on your corn? I always uh, use a little dye, fire cure dye to the corn. So it's no special secret. I've got uh, some uh, fire cure for uh, eggs which works fine for corn too and then the the dye coloring and then some scent the scent is whatever you choose it to be there's all kinds of options out there not rocket science now that i got it tipped i'm going to put it back out so i let some line out uh this is a bottom rod right uh on the on our bottom downrigger ball that we're fishing at about 60 feet in 100 or 200 feet of water um so i'm going to pull the downrigger up I let about 50 feet out, uh, clip it back on the downrigger, drop it down, and, and we're fishing. Hey everybody, Rob Holman here. I'm out fishing the mouth of the Deschutes on the Columbia River for fall salmon with my buddy Austin Moser. We've got the owner and inventor of Fish Fighter products, Chuck, Chuck Rally. Is that right? Chickarelli. Chickarelli? Yeah, but close enough. It's really neat to look at your rail system here. I've seen other variations, but you're explaining that you took some older concepts and made vast improvements to the system. Right. I mean, not just me, but the people that work with me. You right? You'll team, realize yeah. I'm not the smart guy in the room. <laughs> it doesn't take long to figure that out. But. Chuck, do you mind going through yeah, this? Yeah, no, before? and we're, I mean, we're fishing here. We've been uh, hooking fish this morning, and this, I'll kind of show you how the system works. So I'm going to go ahead and gear up. And, you know, if you bring your line counter up to uh, seven, swing this gear in, first thing that's going to come in your hand is the weight. So you can set the weight in the, in the holder. And that's your tackle tender right there? Yep, that's our tackle tender. Now the rod's in. Now if you're using a rudder, you can put that there, get rid of this lettuce. Flasher goes in right here. 
and your bait goes in and you're ready to make a run up the river. Awesome. And then putting it out, uh, it's just the opposite. It's one, lay the bait out. Clean this lettuce off because we are fishing today. Then the sinker goes out, the rod comes out. You got a little twist in it, but now you're ready to start fishing again. It keeps everything in its place and everything has a place. Sure. So when I have customers in the boat, we used to have leads that'd be all over the place. Yeah. As you can see, this rod butt is not in my boat. I can walk by it freely, um, which is really nice. We can change the angles however we want, but our rod butts are always out of the boat and not in our way. It's a lifetime purchase. It's made in America. We're very proud of that. We yeah. build everything right in Mountain Home, Idaho. and. Uh, it's good stuff, and if you really want to start catching fish, you got to get organized. Sure. Well, this is awesome. It really standed out, and it's been a pleasure to fish with you guys today. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Yeah, you bet. Appreciate it, Austin. Yeah, buddy. Let's get back to fishing. Oh, he's fighting big time. Woo! -wee. Woo! -wee. Man! <laughs> We're, we got some pretty good action going here, Mike. Yeah, we do. Pretty steady. And Definitely uh, the trout bite that's turned on. Very yeah. Nice one. Very, very nice class of trout in here. For, uh... Surly, and they're, they're good looking fish. I've noticed as we've cleaned a few, uh, they're cutting very nicely. Look at that. Yeah, beautiful colors. Mm, can I get an A? A. Okay, we're back. And we got that lead core line back out in the water and wanted to finish up that little piece about the Double D Dodger and the four settings um, of the Double D Dodger, which uh, allows this to be pretty flexible and, and give you some options to get the spread out your offerings and get the dodger and your lure away from the boat and the, the great thing about it is there's a diagram right on the back of the double d which just shows you the settings and how this dodger will react uh, when you attach it um, so pretty cool that you got some flexibility in those four options for tuning your trolling action so we took your seat. Get his paws on the steering wheel and then take a picture for social media. Yeah. In a sweet spot. You may not have popped it. Did you pop it? Yeah, I just, I popped it. He's still there. Okay, we got another fish coming around the bend of the island here in the middle of Detroit Reservoir. And Oh. It's doing some good stuff. Yeah, it is. Nice bright silver. I, uh, it didn't pop it off the downrigger, so I, I reeled down to the water and then popped it off and, oh, there he goes. Where do you want it, James? You want to try right to hit the outside here? here? Oh, yeah. Let's put a net on it. Boom, boom, in the boat. Another nice rainbow. This one, again, on the Dutch fork blade. We got a nice flasher, but a Dutch fork clown pattern blade. It's dark. And an Arctic fox. Uh, an Arctic Fox trolling fly. For both those hooks on that Arctic Fox trolling fly just pinned in there. Got him good. In the net a little bit. I'll bring it in real slow since last time. Think that's the difference, huh? No. Oh. Came off. Keep reeling. Keep reeling, he's on.
All right, that's got an interesting look to it. You got one, Mike. Whoa. We got one. <laughs> James with the first kokanee of the day. That's a chrome the unicorn. One footer, the unicorn kokanee. Caught on an old goat. Detroit Reservoir. They went for that uh, tandem flasher uh, old goat. Can yeah. Cannon blade old goat. And wh why are these so prized? They're little salmons, right? And they taste delicious, as Mike was saying. It's a good color. Greedy fish. Rob, it's been a fun couple days here on Detroit Reservoir. I've enjoyed having you and of course my son James and Duke along for the fishing action. Yeah, this is a beautiful part of the Northwest. It's uh, uh, really unique and my first time here. The lake reminds me a lot of Merwin back in Washington. Uh, the hills are a little taller here, but it's definitely beautiful country. Lots of rainbow trout, not so much for the kokanee, um, but we got, we got one and lost a couple. The locals are telling us they're everywhere. They're down deep, they're up top, they're in the middle. But they're not in the boat. Not on the boat. Uh, maybe next time, Mike. Maybe. So we want to thank Scuttlebutt Brewing for uh, being the sponsor of this uh, little Oregon trip that we're on. Yeah, it was really generous of them to support our trip down here and provide us with uh, some beer and a nice hat to wear and, and the support to get us down here and bring uh, Detroit Reservoir to you viewers there at home. I want to remind you, Scuttlebutt and Northwest Fishing Reports encourages responsible drinking, so know your limits. We'll see you guys on the water. Get out there. Scuttlebutt Brewing is available in fine grocery stores across the Northwest. Or find out more at scuttlebuttbrewing.com.